Hey, sorry about the technical difficulties we're having here. Don't understand why our recorder did this, but the last the last video it says uh, I said little an Aramaic. I said little lamb, wake up. Um, only God brings life, and I think it was the last thing that got recorded. But it says then immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age, and and they were immediately overcome and amazed. And I would too to see you know after all this going on. Jairus' feelings, his heart, what's going on, and boom, your daughter's up, your daughter's fine, and all the things that they said were, were wrong. You know, he said, strictly charged him that no one should know this, and he told them to give her something to eat. But you, you really think about this, all that was going on in Jairus' mind, all that was going on in his head, um, how, you know, he was trying to stop the crowd, or try to get the crowd to quick, you know, keep, stop holding Jesus up to come on Jesus let's go don't worry about it and then you have the woman with the issue of blood and all this thing that was going through Jairus' mind God why are you doing this why why is this crowd moving so slowly why in the world can't I get Jesus to move why are there so many different people right and, it's, and you, know, you really think that what Jairus is thinking of himself at that time I mean come on everything is going on sometimes we can get that way we get so stuck in our situation so much stuck and we don't see what else Jesus is doing around the crowds and yet here we are, a woman who was destitute, a woman who had an issue with blood, you know, and and, and, and she grabs a hold of she grabs a hold of a healing. And you know, how God did healed her was different from how God healed the, the demonic man and how God healed the demonic man. Um, God healed Jairus' daughter differently. It's all done differently. Don't base everything on one thing. Just say God can do however he wants to do it. But I want you to look at something real quick here. What, how many years did the woman have an issue with blood? It's said 12 years, right? How old was Jairus' daughter? 12 years. Now, I'm not somebody that's any of these numbers, but this is pretty cool how this works out. Each of the daughters, 12 years. Now, think about this. Jairus got a hold of Jesus, right, in the crowd. Remember? He went out and said, hey, can you, you know... And Jesus was on his way with Jairus to take care of the Jewish maiden or the, the Jewish girl and reference daughter. Now, and this, think about this. Israel is known as the daughter of Jerusalem. Think about this. Because it got me excited. It keeps going burning in my head. Two, on his journey, think about this. Now think about, <clears throat> think about Jesus going now as an Old Testament. God's on his journey to redeem his people, to, to, to love on his, his people of Israel. On the journey, it says a, a Gentile woman, she was a Gentile woman who was referenced as a daughter, who was considered a symbol of the church, who God restores and says, your faith made you well. We live by faith, right? Not by sight. We live by grace. Think about this. It's just start researching this on your own this is really cool but on his journey to restore his people God stops and says there's some other people here that love me that need a healing who need to be made whole because Jesus is to me this is me now Jesus is still in the process of getting his people to be made whole to do the nation of Israel where we have the church that's redeemed by the blood of the lamb who accepted Jesus the Messiah, right? Think about this. It's, this is pretty cool. You know? He he sets it up so you see a story because the story is interwoven. I don't understand what the 12 years is, but I'll get it. But think about it. Jesus is on, you know, God had a plan to rescue his people who fell because of Adam's sin, right? Adam and Eve's sin. He was going to the journey, right? But on his way, there was a, a woman who needed healed, who represents the Gentile church. That would be me and you if you're, you're a Gentile, you're not Jewish. And just think about it, it's, it's really cool. So Jesus goes and um, then we know he goes to the house and he makes them well. And that's at the end of the story. So this is just me. Think about this, though. So at the end, the millennial reign, God's people were restored.
as the church were already restored because we've, we've been walking with Jesus by faith. She went to him in faith. Why did God move sovereignly in the man at the tomb where no one gave him hope? Think about that. No one gave him hope. God moved sovereignly. Why was there a test of faith for the woman and Jairus? Why do we have to go? Th why is our faith tested and stretched? Don't know. Who knows about God? That's it. Who knows but God? So how do I apply this to my life? Know that there's no that God answers prayer in different ways. Our faith needs to increase to grow in each situation, and we learn from what God is trying to teach us in each one. Proverbs three verses five and six, one of my favorites. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. So I, I, I wanted to add that on that little end on that piece because I felt it was important for us to look at because <clears throat> God works in patterns. And if you look through the scriptures, there's patterns that God has set up. Look up, look up the, the Jewish wedding. Uh, I think it's called the Kedavah. And look how the pattern is that there's an engagement, there's a betrothal, there's a time when the when the the, the, the the groom goes and makes an addition on the house. He goes away for a season, and then when he comes back, there's a celebration, there's a party, and there's, and at the end when they're married, there's a consummation. It's just so cool thinking how God works in patterns. And here you can see one of God's patterns once again, but you gotta dig for it. Amen. Be blessed, and we'll see you next week.